Let's go ahead and recap the beverage curve, which shows the relationship between theta, our market tightness, right? That's vacancies over unemployed. And also the unemployment rate, that U rate down here. We're going to see that this has an inverse relationship. So this is going to be our beverage curve. Remember we get this by saying, uh, by the, the thing that we just solved for, we solved for that U star as a function of theta. And we said it was S over S plus F as a function of theta. Now, of course, every time we do anything with, with graphs, we're going to have to worry about how does this thing shift? Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we want to hold theta fixed and we get some level of the unemployment. And what's going to make that either move to the right or move to the left? Is it going to shift to the right or shift to the left? So we can go up here and we can look at our equation to really see what's going to change. So any of these, how are they going to change? And the first one's pretty obvious, right? It's going to be this S. So we know that there's going to be the separation rate. And logically, it should make sense that an increase in the separation rate will increase the unemployment rate holding all else constant. So that's going to be a rightward shift. So that's going to be a shift to the right. You can see that algebraically up here, right? Because you can see that the numerator has 100% of it accounted for by the separation rate, whereas the denominator does not have 100% of it accounted for. It's, it's a part of the denominator. So when those two things change, the numerator is going to change by more, which would be an increase. So that's where we see the separation rate increasing, causing a rightward shift and increase in the unemployment rate. The next thing we care about is we're going to care about if there's anything in here that would change the finding rate, right? The job finding rate. Is there anything in there? Well, there actually is. Our level of gamma. Remember gamma? Gamma, G-A-M-M-A, -M -M right? It looks like this. Sometimes it looks like a Y when it's typed out. That's why a lot of times I'll put the actual word gamma. This is showing the matching efficiency. So matching efficiency. So how quickly we'll match someone who's unemployed to that vacancy. So if we're able to match them faster, the job finding rate's going to go up, and therefore the unemployment rate's going to go down. So we're actually going to see a leftward shift with gamma increasing. So this would show a leftward shift of this beverage curve. I can put these on the curve so you can show a rightward shift. We would see this go here. So this would be the beverage curve with an increase in the uh, separation rate, holding all else constant. Whereas this would be the new beverage curve with an increase in gamma holding all else constant. At the end of the day, when we're looking at curves, we're looking at some sort of function. And we're seeing what's in that function that would cause this to change holding one of them constant. That's what we mean by a shift versus a movement along is when either one of the two things on the, on the axes change to create an endogenous change.